Today on Flavors of the Coast, there's nothing like skipping straight to dessert. And Chef Irv Miller is doing just that with homemade ice cream on top of an all-time favorite pecan pie. Take a little bit of butter, actually quite a bit of butter, and some brown sugar and corn syrup. This is all part of the style of transparent pies, which are real popular here in the South. Plus, Malia Allen shows you exactly where to find the finest pecans on the Gulf Coast. There are plenty of sweet treats straight ahead on Flavors of the Coast. Support for Flavors of the Coast is provided by Pen Graphics, a full-service printer using the latest Heidelberg technology. When the world is in black and white, Pen Graphics says it in color. Lamar Advertising Company, a leader in outdoor advertising since 1902. For the Kitchen, your one-stop source for kitchen accessories and gifts, located in Milton's Historic District. And by contributions to this PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Flavors of the Coast. Now, here's award-winning executive chef Irv Miller. My incredible nine-year-old daughter, Sienna, and I have this philosophy, why not eat dessert first? And that's exactly what we're going to do here today. We're going to skip the appetizer, skip the salad, and skip the entree, and go straight to dessert. So uh, let's get started on America's most celebrated nut, the pecan. Um, I'm going to start, first of all, by making uh, a vanilla ice cream, a homemade vanilla ice cream, and this is how it goes. We're going to start with some milk. And this is very easy to do. And a little bit of cream, heavy whipping cream. And this is actually a, a classic sauce called a cream anglaise in a French term, fancy term, but today we're going to call it vanilla ice cream base. So I have taken the milk and the cream and combined them. And the cream makes it a little bit richer. Usually you just have milk and cream anglaise. And I have sugar. I'm going to take half of the sugar and put it in with the milk. And that keeps the milk from burning because we have to bring the milk up to about 180 degrees. And that's what we're starting here. And we have egg yolks. I'm going to put the egg yolks in with the other half of the sugar. And we're just going to mix these up. We're going to do a technique today which is called tempering. And um, I'll show you how that's done. Uh, we're also going to add some vanilla. This is pure vanilla extract, the expensive good stuff. The imitation's OK, but this has a lot better flavor. And also, I've taken some vanilla beans and sliced them down the center. And I'm just going to scrape out the seeds or the beans. And we're going to add that to the vanilla ice cream base. See how nice that comes out? And it's so rich and dark, you can't really even tell it's vanilla until you actually see the little beans start to separate. And I have one more. And we're just going to scrape it out. Turn that down. We don't want to boil it too much. Actually want to try to avoid boiling it at all. And we'll take the rest of these beans and put them right in here. So this is how it comes together. You would take a spatula like I have here and bring this up to about 180 degrees. And once you brought it up, you have to start to simmer it and let it and stir it constantly. And then you take your hot milk and we put it into the yolks a little bit at a time. Now the sugar in the yolks actually retards the egg yolks from cooking. So we, we're actually uh, beginning the tempering stage. And you can see it's already starting to get warm. And now when I go to add the egg yolk and sugar mixture to the milk and sugar mixture and cream mixture, it will actually start to come together quite easily. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to go back. And I have some hot milk here that I started earlier. 
and I'll show you how you would do that. You merely, once you have warmed it and tempered it, you pour it back into the milk and cream mixture. And then you, you have to hover over this and literally stand here and stir it until it comes up to 180 degrees once again. And it will actually begin to coat the back of the spoon. And it's, this one is, the milk was already warm and it's actually come together quite quickly. But this one I have over here is already finished. And the next stage, once it thickens like that, is to have an ice bath. And that's what I have down here. And you have to strain this in case there's any little bits and pieces of eggs that might have curled. And we're just going to strain this. Vanilla ice cream is, is great and it's so easy and so versatile and you can do so many things with it. It really is the foundation of a lot of different ice creams, including ones with nuts, pecans, pistachio ice cream, all those excellent ice creams. Now, I have this very cool little ice cream maker right here that I'm going to show you how to use. Let me put this out here and bring this over. And I have the little containers that go inside, the right over here in the freezer. Now, this is kind of a neat way to make ice cream. These little machines don't cost very much and the technique here is that uh, to keep the price down on the machine they actually uh, make the motor just turn this and and these little little buckets have some kind of special chemical uh, ingredient in there where they you freeze these in advance and then when you go to make the ice cream uh, you pull them from the freezer like I just did and then I'll show you how this comes together. You have these little things that lock into place once you put the lids on, like I'm about to do now. And I have some cream anglaise that I've already put into a pour, and I'm just going to put this in here. Now you could do it the old way with rock salt and uh, churning, but this is really, you'll have ice cream in about 35, 40 minutes. So I'm just going to get these going. I'm going to do both sides. You can do one at a time if you like. And all you do is push the button and you've got it going. Now when we come back, I'm going to show you this incredible pecan pie recipe that I have. And then uh, we're going to plate it up and we'll see you in just a minute. Irv's delicious dessert comes together when we return. But first, Malia is on the trail of the perfect pecan. Have you ever tried shelling your own pecans to get the beautiful golden halves like this? Well, I have, using a contraption like this, and I never can seem to get out the whole half. Well, today we're at Renfro Pecan Company, and we're going to find out how they get the beautiful pecan halves out of the whole pecan shell. Right. I'm Jake Renfro III. I'm the son of, of uh, Jake Jr. Uh, who took this business uh, over from his dad. Jake Renfro III runs the shelling plant of the family-owned Renfro Pecan, a company that sells 12 to 20 million pounds of in-shell pecans a year. And if you think that's nuts, they also shell out 750,000 pounds of pecan halves and pieces every harvest season. And what a process. New crop pecans begin to arrive in huge crates at JW Renfro in October. And first, they're floated in a chlorine bath that sanitizes the pecan and cleans out any debris. Next, pecans are uh, graded by size, so they, they crack better. We get a uniform product out of the sheller, which uh, lets the equipment do a better job. Now the pecans begin the rough and tumble journey through a series of four crackers that carefully break away the thin outer shell without damaging the tender nut inside. Then things really begin to hop. The cracked nuts bounce on a conveyor belt into a unique blower system that's specially calibrated to separate out the pecan pieces from the halves. It pushes air up through the bottom of the, uh, uh, of the stream of pecans in the lightest weight, which is the shell and the meal and the defects 
uh, they're, they're blown out of the system and then the heavier product, which is the good product, falls down into, into barrels that we accumulate and package. Barrels of pecan halves and pieces are rolled to their final inspection. Highly discriminating two-man teams or pickers literally hand-pick through every fragment to ensure only perfect pecans go into every Renfro package. When we pick, we fill both hands completely full, pick out the pieces. This would be an amber. We don't throw it away, we just put it over here. They're going to chop it up later for something else. When my hands get full, I throw them in there. And when all these bins get full, our boy will come around and dump them out. And you repeat the process all day long. A long process with a delicious result. The rich colored ambers are perfect for baking and many make their way to the Renfro kitchen or sold to retail restaurants. But the most sought after prize is the perfect pecan halves that have made JW Renfro famous right here on the coast. When we come back, we'll show you how Renfro Pecans takes these beautiful golden nuts from delicious to delectable. So stay with us. If you're just joining us, we're about to get started on some pie dough. We're going to make a pecan pie today. And I've also made some, uh, some ice cream base and I've got that churning. So let's get started on the pie dough. Uh, what we need is all-purpose flour. And I'm just going to sift that a little bit. I'm going to take you through the steps of pie dough. And I'll try to keep it simple. It takes a little time to make, but it's just so much better than buying pre bought dough that's already pre-made. But you can do that. I'm okay with that and I'm sure that you'll be fine with that too. But the good thing about this is that you can do this in advance, a day ahead, two days ahead, a week in advance, and you can actually make the dough in the pan and freeze the pan if you like. So I have a little bit of salt and I'm just going to mix that in with the milk. Some people use water. I like to use milk. Uh, I like the natural sugars. Helps make it sweet and caramelize it. Now I don't add any sugar to this recipe because it has such a sweet dessert. Now I have two kinds of fat here and you always need fat when you make pie dough. I have butter and I have some shortening. And the butter just, uh, once again, it makes it nice and flavorful and uh, the shortening gives it uh, a lot of its elasticity. So it's it's very good combination of two fats in this. Now the idea here is to make pea-sized pellets and you just coat them gently, but you have to do it um, fairly quickly. You could use a dough cutter. Uh, I prefer to get my hands into the dough and it's a lot of fun. And actually the kids like to do it too. Um, one of the things I want to mention is you don't want to get it too fine. You don't want the pellets of coated uh, fat to be too small because then you're looking at a mealy kind of crust. We're looking for a nice light and fluffy uh, pie dough, pie crust. So I've almost got the size pellets that I'm looking for. Now there's all kinds of pecans and nuts and all kinds of goodies that Renfro's has. And uh, right here in front of me you can see I've got some uh, pecan meal which you could actually use to, uh, to coat uh, some fish or some seafood with and uh, saute it with. Um, appetizers, you could pecan dust some quail and saute that. Uh, salads, great roasted pecans are great in salads. Uh, it's actually endless. Uh, the Indians used to originally uh, use it in stews. They would grind it up and use it in stews as thickeners. And they're actually the ones that discovered uh, the use of the pecan. And I, I love pecans. Uh, unlike uh, pistachios and walnuts and some of the nuts, pine nuts that you know, originated back in uh, uh, AD, um, these, these are relatively new from, uh, from this area, meaning 150 years old or so. Uh, Thomas Jefferson and uh, George Washington actually uh, were responsible for making uh, uh, the pecan popular. So I just added the, the milk, which has the dissolved salt into it, and I'm just going to bring it together. I'm just going to add a little bit more 